Okay, so now we are recording. Um, and I am going to give this over to David Porter, CEO, eCampus Ontario, to start, start us off. Thanks so much, Lillian, and welcome everyone. Uh, we are delighted to be a small part of Open Education Week, uh, a celebration of the global open education movement. And uh, it's great to be a part of such a energetic uh, set of opportunities that are happening around the globe this week. Uh, the goal this week for us is to further raise awareness about the movement and its impact on teaching and learning. Um, today um, marks the largest celebration of open education by Ontario's public post-secondary institutions to date. Uh, we've heard from at least 19 post-secondary institutions across the province, and they've shared with us their plans for organizing and hosting open education events and activities on their campuses. And those activities range from uh, an open book launch, lunch and learn workshops and panels, exhibit booths, speaker sessions, unconferences, website launches, webinars, postcard campaigns, and even a scavenger hunt. So there's a big range of activity happening. Ecampus Ontario is going to host freely available webinars all week long in French and English, and you can check out the website for details. But the big items of emphasis for us are the following. Um, the open education movement continues to push traditional thinking and education towards a more accessible, flexible, and collaborative approach for all. Um, we are finding that Ontario is the home of a great deal of expertise and diversity of thinking within the emerging fields of open education. And this week's activities will showcase that activity and expertise across our post-secondary institutions. We also wanna thank the global event organizers for their leadership in advancing the open movement. And we wanna thank you, the participants, for taking part in activities that serve to benefit our students, faculty, the institutions, and more broadly, the citizens of Ontario. Everyone involved in Open Education Week is contributing to saving money, raising the quality of educational resources and practices, and making education more accessible and affordable for all. We hope that you'll take the opportunity this week uh, to bring colleagues to visit eCampus Ontario's newly updated open library that is being launched today. Lillian Hogendorn, our open and digital access lead, will take over from here and give you a demo of the open library's upgraded capabilities. And we expect that you will find lots there to serve your needs for instruction on your campus. So thanks for joining us today, and I'll pass this back to Lillian. All right, thank you so much, David. So um, I am gathering that many of you have been open library users in the past. Um, but today we are launching our first eCampus Ontario independent open library, which will be the home of open educational resources in post-secondary for the province. Um, our team is comprised of myself, uh, Michelle Singh, who we'll talk a little bit later, our Chief Technology Officer, Luke Lacoste, Senior Systems and Database Administrator, and Mohamed Riaz, our excellent friend and developer. And these folks have been working tirelessly to get our library up and running for you for Open Education Week. Um, we also partner with the University of Waterloo to provide awesome print-on-demand services for the textbooks in our library, uh, including these folks, Randy, uh, Madeline, Sean, uh, and Sean, and Karen. And we have a partnership with Pressbooks for publishing infrastructure, and we'll have a Pressbooks webinar tomorrow at the same time, and that partnership includes Steel Wagstaff and Hugh McGuire. So this project has been underway for a couple of years. Um, about two years ago, 
we launched our first open library, which was essentially all of the resources in the BC campus library uh, with a new eCampus Ontario finish on the front. Um, and we could not have done it without the people that managed the past two years of work, including Peggy French, who is our, one of our program managers here at eCampus Ontario, uh, an amazing and very large team at Ryerson University uh, coming from many different departments. But I, I want to specifically thank Sally Wilson, Fengman, uh, Wang, Stephen Marsden, and Christina Pietropaolo, who I uh, really saw through not only phases one and two, but phase three of this project. Um, BC Campus for providing us with the initial uh, content for our library and Agile Humanities, who did some of our design work. Um, this has been a huge collaborative multi-year effort, and we're so excited to finally get to share that with you today. So the library is live at openlibrary.ecampusontario.ca, exactly where our old open library lived. Um, and you can go ahead and get on there, uh, explore it, um, take a look around. It has a totally new interface, new information. But I wanted to talk a little bit first about the things that make this open library different from our previous open textbook library. So first of all, not only do we have a beautiful new infrastructure, we also our new library, we also have new infrastructure that's running in the back end of it. Um, so our new library is built using DSpace, which is an open source repository. And that was really important to us uh, to use open source infrastructure to provide access to open educational resources. This DSpace repository is managed in-house by our team here, uh, and that means that we have a lot of control over what goes in our library. So that means that we can put new stuff in the library. Um, previously, our main content in our open library was textbooks, but we're hearing from you that you need a place to put other kinds of open educational resources. Um, so if you're using something for teaching and learning and it's open, it can be in the library. DSpace is optimized to host a ton of different file types. And um, we have a list of types of things that you might want to put in the library. If you have other course materials or learning materials that you want to put in our library, you can go ahead and send us an email and we will do our best to incorporate them. So right now, we have mostly textbooks, 275 resources. Most of them are textbooks. But, but, um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna just stop and reshare my screen because <laughs> there are some issues. Um, all right, can everybody see that? Can I get someone in the chat to let me know if we can see? Thanks. Excellent, great, I am so glad it's working. <laughs> okay, um, so we have textbooks, but we also have uh, the ability to incorporate assignments, case studies, complete courses, games. We know some people in Ontario are doing amazing work with the games in their classrooms, uh, images, charts, learning activities, lecture notes, podcasts, question banks, rubrics, simulations, slide decks, syllabi, video demonstrations, video lectures, or this all encapsulating other uh, material types. So if you have something, then and you are using it and maybe you're using it in your learning management system but you want to share it um this will be the place to find it so right now we essentially took all of the wonderful resources in the bc campus library and put them into our library now that we're live we're ready to grow the library and add your new kinds of resources so we have a new library which means we have new rules for what you can put in the library. Um, so not only can we accept a number of different types of files and a number of different types of learning resources, we want to make it easier for you to share your work and for you to grow a community of practice around OER in your discipline. So the new criteria for our open library are that it meets accessibility requirements under AODA, that you have an open license or it's in the public domain, and that you have at least one editable file. So that means either a doc, 
X or uh, edit raw video file if you're using videos, HTML, XML. Um, if, as long as somebody can adapt it, we can put it in the library. Now, we have some other recommended criteria. For example, um, this is a Canadian and Ontario library, so we want to make sure that uh, things, if possible, have relevance for the Canadian context. Um, maybe things are interactive. Uh, maybe it includes extra resources like test banks. Um, but those are the only three requirements to submit to the library. And you can submit something that you've made, that you're using in class, uh, that we don't have, or that you found and you think might be valuable. Um, we are gonna do our best to make sure that the library is constantly growing and we're constantly updating how many resources we have. Okay. So we also have new publishing support. A little while ago, we launched a, uh, Pressbooks for access to Pressbooks for any post-secondary educator uh, in Ontario at one of our institutions. So we have integrated our library with Pressbooks. Um, so you can use Pressbooks to create or customize um, well-designed learning resources that you can publish directly into the open library. We've worked really closely with Pressbooks to create a way to push content in Pressbooks directly into the library um, to be made easily available for everyone. And we've worked with folks at Pressbooks to add features that um, Ontario educators are looking for. So Pressbooks now has support for H5P, which some of you may already be using. Um, we've got a new scheme that is accessible and um, We've got cloning support. If you see a resource in the library and it's in Pressbooks, you can easily make a, your own copy of it and start to adapt and edit it for your teaching. Uh, the team at Pressbooks has been incredible and really responsive to the needs of Ontario educators. So if there are things that you wish Pressbooks could do, we are here, you can get in touch with us and we can help. So you can find the Open Library Publishing platform at uh, this URL, ecampusontario.pressbooks.pub. Um, right now, if you request an account, we'll set you up with one within a, within a day, usually, <laughs> and um, you can get ready to start creating. And finally, um, the great thing about us having our own library is that we can be providing continuous support and continuous service. We are road mapping and planning for the future so that we can keep building a library that works for Ontario. So you can look for open library updates in your eCampus Ontario monthly newsletter. You should receive that shortly. And if you're not signed up, you should go to our website and sign up uh, for the newsletter. Um, we are working on a plan to continue to roll out new developments, better searching, um, better information, more community resources. We want this to be your library because we built it for you. So get in touch with us if you have an idea. We're the people behind the library and we can make it work. I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle, who's gonna talk a little bit in French about our French interface. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. Merci, Lynn. Euh, donc, effectivement, euh, je suis très fier de pouvoir euh, partager avec vous la nouvelle euh, de notre nouvelle bibliothèque libre de ressources éducatives libres, puis de mettre l'accent sur le fait que euh, la bibliothèque est également disponible en français. Euh, donc, l'interface complète de la bibliothèque, autant la portion euh, recherche de ressources, tout comme la portion où on peut créer des ressources avec Pressbooks, va être euh, entièrement euh, accessible en français. Euh, puis l'idée pour nous, c'est vraiment de mettre en avant scène euh, les ressources éducatives libres en français qui existent, puis faire la promotion aussi de la création de ressources éducatives libres euh, chez, chez les francophones. Euh, un peu comme Liliane l'a mentionné plus tôt, euh, à ce stade-ci, la bibliothèque contient euh, autour de 270 euh, ressources, principalement des euh, manuels scolaires. De ces 270 ressources-là, il y en a une grande majorité qui sont en anglais. Euh, un des objectifs pour nous de la bibliothèque, c'est de faire la promotion 
de la création, de l'utilisation et de l'adoption euh, de ressources éducatives libres en français. Donc, Pressbooks, euh, on est dans, dans, dans les derniers mille de, de, de rendre Pressbooks 100% disponible en français. La bibliothèque elle-même en soi est disponible en français. Puis, on va continuer à travailler avec euh, tous les acteurs dans le milieu éducatif post-secondaire euh, ici en Ontario pour faire la promotion de ces ressources. Euh, parallèlement à ça, euh, on va aussi embaucher, on est dans le processus final d'embaucher puis d'annoncer euh, l'arrivée d'un gestionnaire de programme francophone ici à eCampus qui va pouvoir dédier 100% de son temps à euh, la promotion des programmes français euh, en Ontario, incluant évidemment la bibliothèque dont on parle aujourd'hui. Donc, je suis ravi comme francophone d'avoir participé au projet puis de pouvoir participer aussi, finalement, à l'essor des ressources éducatives libres ici, en Ontario francophone. Donc, Liliane, euh, je te repasse la parole. Euh, merci de m'avoir permis de contribuer à ton webinaire. Liliane, back to you. Thank you, Michelle. Merci. Um, yeah, so one of the things we have been promising is a French interface, and it's finally here. Um, I'm so excited uh, to have a French interface and to be ramping up our support for Francophone OER. Um, and I invite you, if you are Francophone or if you are bilingual, to explore the French interface. Let us know what you think and let us know um, how we can better support Uh, the discoverability and creation of French open educational resources. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and show you the library. Okay. So the Open Library exists at openlibrary.ecampusontario.ca. Um, this is our new home page. Uh, it's also mobile responsive if you're looking on a phone or tablet right now. Um, obviously, we've got our three main calls to action. Find a resource, get started with searching. Uh, customize, get some information about adapting. Or create, uh, this is where you might go to request a Pressbooks account. Um, and we're keeping track of what the impact of our library is. So in the past couple of years, um, we have seen reports of 80 different uh, educators using OER in their classrooms. We have 275 resources in the library, almost 20,000 learners that are impacted, and over $2 million reported in savings. Um, if you are already using OER or you know someone using OER, please, encourage them to let us know and share their adoption. Um, we track adoptions, we want to measure the impact, and we want to show that Ontario is a big player for open education. There's a lot of amazing work going on here. And I also want to mention we have not stopped, but we're ramping up support for our OER review program. So if you are a subject matter expert, you are teaching, uh, qualified Ontario subject matter experts uh, who are educators receive an honorarium to complete a peer review of an open textbook that's already been published. Uh, so you can learn more on our home page and maybe get started. And if you're already using OER and you're a big champion, you can provide us with a testimonial about how great it is. <laughs> um, But I'm sure what you're all wondering about is the search. So I am just going to get started and search for a resource. So if you go through the search, we've got new filters. Um, we have done our best to re-catalog all of these items and put them into subjects that we hope will resonate with you. Um, you can also sort by resources that have educator reviews, that have uh, reported adoptions, people are using them in their classrooms, or that have ancillary resources. And finally, um, we have a few resources in French, it's predominantly English right now, and uh, we've got one resource that exists in a bunch of different languages. So as we continue to grow our collection, you can start to sort by language. When you go ahead and get into a, a book that maybe I'll find one that we've created, <laughs> Um, so 
So here's a, a book that was adapted by uh, eCampus Ontario last year during a sprint. Um, when you go ahead and get into your book, uh, you can be the first to review the item. We have a number of download options depending on what's available. Um, and here's where you can order a print copy from the University of Waterloo. That will take you out to their site and pretty soon we'll be announcing a new print interface. So stay tuned. And of course, you can read it online, especially if it exists on Pressbooks. Uh, and finally, we've got licensing information, full reviews, and a place to share your adoption. Uh, and down here at the bottom, if you get lost at any point, here are your links to how to get involved with the library, uh, either suggesting a text, reporting an adoption, uh, asking to review an OER, or simply getting in touch with another question that you might have. Um, So basically, uh, it works like a normal library. <laughs> um, as we continue to grow, we'll continue to add new information. We've already done some awesome user testing and gotten some amazing feedback about uh, improving our search and adding new search facets, um, making things work for you. So of course, as we grow those item types, um, We'll, we'll hopefully be able to filter by item type um, and we'll be announcing those and communicating in a very transparent way through our newsletter every month and let you know what's going on at the library. All right. So there are three ways that you can help build our library. And I've, I've gone over them a couple of times, but I'm gonna read over them one last time. You can create something. You can make a new resource with Pressbooks. It doesn't have to be a whole textbook, but, or it, it can just be a little bit, or you can make a resource in another way. Um, or if you have something that's living in your learning management system that you wanna share with your colleagues, you can share that in the library. Um, if you're already using open resources, let us know, even if you made them. We want to be able to track our impact uh, on education in Ontario. We want to show how great this community of open educators is. So report that. And if you're not sure about OER and maybe you want to assess the quality or you're not sure how to get in, volunteer to review. Uh, reading and reviewing a textbook takes a little bit of time, but we value your labor uh, and we value academic work and we make sure that Ontario educators receive an honorarium from your labor. And if you have any suggestions, you can let us know. Email us at open at ecampusontario.ca and we can take your suggestions or comments or answer your questions about the library. Thank you so much for joining us for our open library launch and I'm gonna reserve the rest of this time for questions. And if you have questions, you can just type them in the chat. Okay. And if no one has any questions, or if you want to ask a question once we've stopped recording, I'm going to, oh, great. Thank you, Mina. Um, if someone submits a work and wants to revise the work, is it a new item in the library, or will the older version be superimposed over? Um, so we can do a number of things. DSpace is a great tool that allows there to have multiple versions of an item attached to a single record in the catalog. So if you want to revise your work, we can easily add that file, the new edition, uh, into the library attached to the old edition so you can see it all together. Um, if somebody else has uh, revised it, we might be able to start to uh, draw better connections between resources. That's something that 
I think would, would be really great and we have to explore technically. And Nick, I see that you say there's not a category for education, which seems like a gap. And yes, so those categories are evolving. Um, they're not perfect yet, and I will definitely take note of that. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Any other questions, comments? Okay, if you have more questions, you can use our contact form on the Open Library website, or you can email open at ecampusontario.ca, open at ecampusontario.ca, just putting that in the chat. Oh, thank you, Lena. Um, and in addition, I will turn off the uh, recording right now, uh, stop our recording, and uh, I will stay in the meeting if anyone has any other questions that they're not comfortable asking on mic. So thank you all so much for joining me again today. I can't wait to see what you do with our open library, um, and I can't wait to continue to grow this community. <laughs>